On today's episode, we talk about some players that we see rising in ADP over this offseason. We jump into all of your questions because it is a mailbag show and a huge announcement for a huge anniversary. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you subscribe right now and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in one and all. Well, you just you just time out the space. You still you could have jumped in like at the normal spot. I did. You just missed it. You went to a. I welcomed a, everybody in. A supersonic frequency that human ears cannot perceive. It was there, Mike. Just, All right. I promise. Uh, welcome in the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Tuesday, June eleventh. Happy to have you with us. Jason Moore is here. Black shirt today. Black yeah, hat today. I went, I went black shirt, black hat today. Uh, and if you want to watch YouTube, uh, stay tuned for Thursday because I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to wear, but it might shock you. It wasn't always this way. No, it wasn't always this way. You had much more variety, far fewer hats. Yeah, and then I got much bigger and much less <laughs> hair, so it's like this is perfect. But you, I mean, obviously at some point in time you decided this was the best way to deal with both of those it's, issues. It's just the best I can do. You know, we, we're all out here trying we're to do our best, uh, trying to do our best. And that's all. I'm, I'm just a man of the people. Trying it's just to be people the best. can't tell the difference between this show and any other show. No, no, no. You're it the was the exact it, same. It was funny to see the montage of like weeks of me very quickly changing. And it just it doesn't look like a montage. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't like, just looks like there's some choppy video. Uh, Mike Wright is here with us. Indeed. Excited for today's episode. We have an ADP question a quick question of the day we'll get to momentarily but first announcing it's a big one go ahead it's a big one people oh, oh. it Why is did i say go ahead not know. just a live show not just a megala show it is the fantasy footballers 10th anniversary Live Megala show in LA. We are doing it up special. We are doing it up unique, and we want you there at the Palace Theater for our our tenth birthday. Like yep. you, this tenth birthday is a big birthday, and we want you there. Double yeah. digits. You don't even have to be presents. <laughs> no, just be there, man. Yeah, be there. You are our present. <laughs> exactly. And by by the looks of the tenth anniversary Megala show graphic, we will be. Wearing cowboy outfits, riding a giant shark. Yeah, we're or at least that's the theme of the event because that is we got to get this a, show. We got to get a price check on. Uh, can you rent Jaws from Universal? The old one. Like, d does he still? Do they still have that tour thing yeah, where yeah, Jaws comes do. out? And yep. He, he, can we, we can we can borrow can him. We borrow for him. A day. <laughs> See, the deucer said if you had gone with your presence is our present. That would have been like a fun play on words. They're both. They're oh, very I'm proud sure. of that. Yeah, I'm sure they took 30, 40 seconds to figure that one out. Good job, guys. Um, it is our yeah. 10th anniversary Megala show live in Los Angeles, Saturday, August 24th at the Palace Theater. Tickets available now at BallersLive.com. They will sell out. We want you there with us. So please go grab the best seat in the house and come join us, which is basically every seat Which in the is house. any seat. It, it, I, I hate how they, uh, full disclosure, the, the the mezzanine, when you go to ballerslive.com, it looks like, oh, that's super far away, the way they display it. It's not. There's no bad seats in this place. No, the it mezzanine is, sits above the right, other seats. It's Therefore, above it. they're in the same depth. <laughs> exactly. Which and means it, you can catch a T-shirt. I was going to say, I'm not firing my T-shirts to the front row. The kill a man. Yeah, the mezzanine gets the shirts. And, uh, yeah, ballerslive.com. Tickets available now. We want to see you there. Very exciting. Looking forward to that. That'll be towards the end of August, August 24th at Palace Theater. Great venue. Should be a lot of fun. It will definitely. What is this should nonsense? It's just conversation. It's not, it's not a, a good pitch. It will be. 
It, it's a 10th anniversary. It, it is we a, will have special things planned. It's a special show that we don't want you to we miss. We will spend money we shouldn't. Oh, we're going to lose so much money on to this. To do something we shouldn't. Again, price check on Jaws. <laughs> we can look into that. We can look into that. I, I don't know if you need to go to one of those movie memorabilia websites, the auctions. Somebody has to have the original Jaws for now. And I will ride him into the Palace Theater. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, quick question of the day. What player do you expect to see rise the most in average draft position throughout the offseason? Which um, we've had a couple of mock drafts in recent weeks. There are players whose values are currently, you know, not very high that we know aren't realistic mm -hmm. for the way they're going to end up in the midst of uh, – Draft season yeah, in you, August. You have the primary one that I think when we're on the mock draft show, we just know. Like we know from experience, we know from you know wh what's about to play out that one of these guys is just completely mispriced. So why don't you? So bring should that I up. not even mention my guy? No, you it's should. Too obvious. You should mention him first because he's the true. Like if you're in drafts right now, this will not be his price later. I will mention him with an asterisk to include some other players. Jonathan Brooks, rookie running back of the Carolina Panthers, currently drafted in the ninth round. We know the facts around rookie running backs and opportunities and the fact that two, at least two rookie running backs have finished inside the top 24 every year since 2012. So he has good odds of being one of those two. The depth chart, it's not intimidating in Carolina. He fits the mold of what Dave Canales wants to do with a pass catcher, somebody who's versatile like Rashad White. And so Jonathan Brooks right now, not even close to where he's going to be drafted, assuming, you know, his injury doesn't have an extra issue or something weird at camp. But Jonathan Brooks, ninth round, is going to be much, much higher. But I will say that, like, this is going to be true of several rookies, whether it's uh, depth chart battles and where you figure out where they, they actually stand on each of these teams, opportunities like that. Um, Hype train. Yeah, those things are just going to happen. Yeah, you start seeing Keon Coleman uh, being reported that he's got a great rapport and he's yeah. dominating in the in the red zone drills. All of a sudden, he's going to be, uh, you know, flying through. When I looked through, I yeah, tried. Yeah, he's right now, and he's a ninth. He's almost directly next to Jonathan Brooks. Yeah, I tried to avoid a rookie simply because, I mean, it's kind of a cheat code right now. If you're in other drafts, draft rookies because they're not they're not where they're going to finish. Uh, the guy that I uh, am going to bring up as an ADP riser is. Uh, just the guy I've believed in for as long as I've been alive. <laughs> Zach Moss, a superstar running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. Right now he's the running back 31, just one spot ahead of Jonathan Brooks as the running back 32 in the ninth round. And this is a player that I think right now, there's people don't want to say that he is the starter, um, that he's going to be the primary uh dominator of touches they're not sure maybe it's Zach Moss um and and um you know maybe it's uh who's it uh oh, I Chase, Brown? Say Chris Brown. That's Chase, yeah, no, Chase that's Brown Chase Brown Chase Brown showed a lot of juice in very few plays last year I just cannot believe that it's going to be Chase Brown he was I mean he had an opportunity to get use he he didn't they go out and they sign a guy that fits their system perfectly in Zach Moss. So I think as we get closer and it becomes more established, I think beat reporters will start saying, this is Zach Moss's backfield. Brown will mix in a little bit, but uh, it'll be primary Moss. Breaking news. I was going to bring it up. It's pretty important. Yeah. Uh, we but have our, our research team is just outstanding. Are we sold out at the Palace Theater? No, no. that's, oh, that's okay. like okay. 10 minutes from now. Um, the original Jaws animatronic shark, nicknamed Bruce the Shark, is on display at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. Based on Mike's research, yep. Mike, break it down. 9.6 miles from the Palace Theater. That's where Jaws is. So it's a 25-foot, 1,200-pound shark. So logistically, that, the it's going to take the whole Foot Clan <laughs> to get it over there. When they made Jaws, they made him 1,200 pounds? Well, oh, animatronics in the seventies? You kidding me? I that's pure steel and stuff, uh, baby. I was gonna say they only had steel, probably. But if there's someone who works at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles and you want 
to parade Jaws down the, the street, easiest just 10 way, miles. I was going to say the easiest way to get him there is to parade Jaws yeah, down the street. Could have ride him. Yeah, make it a big deal. This is supposed to happen, everybody. So do that. I imagine it takes a little while to get pushed 9.6 miles where, where on the, a mechanical the shark. The Academy, Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. It's almost next door. Okay. So close. I'm asking chat GPT how we can get this done. <laughs> Oh, All really? Right. Yeah, you they get, said they can't assist with that. It's illegal. Uh, you get oh, back it's illegal. Yeah. Uh, well, we're borrowing. We're not going to keep yeah, it. Yeah, no, no. This is nothing illegal. We're just we're borrowing give it, back. it. Whenever you have to announce it's nothing illegal not at the to top. That, it says even borrowing without permission is still illegal and unethical. We're you getting permission. Bodying me on my morality? <laughs> You're a robot. <laughs> it doesn't say at the end, take a look in the mirror, pal. <laughs> yeah. Mike, who is your... <laughs> <laughs> Who is your ADP riser? Somebody that you think is going to shoot up draft boards? So I believe we've kind of mentioned him recently in passing, but it's Jerome Ford is right now the RB42. He is going in the 12th round. We have – it's he's there right now because people are leaving margin and hope for Nick Chubb to come back from his devastating knee injury. I'm just on the side of I don't, I don't think that Chubb's going to be ready to start the season – who knows if he's ever going to be good this season, like back to being anything close to Nick Chubb. And last year, Jerome Ford was the RB17. He was a top 24 running back 11 times. 11 times. And as of, with the information we have right now, Ford would project to be the guy who gets the most work. Like he, I mean, He's been with the team for years. They keep bring, One, they keep bringing him back. Two, he was pretty good for them last year, and he, you know he was third on the team in targets per route run. So he's getting those targets that are super valuable on top of all the the work that he got on the ground last year. So if as we I get think closer, Chubb's going to be one that moves up too. He could potentially because two videos of Nick Chubb running, and he's going yes. to shoot up draft board, which we will see before I mean, the I season starts. One. I just yeah, you'll see Nick Chubb running, but we all we, we saw Javante Williams running. Like, this is why – just beware. Beware of these injuries. man. If, there are Adrian Petersons in the world. They exist. There's some Wolverine blood going around for some of these, uh, these elite athletes. But most of them, it takes real time to recover. And that's why, as of right now, I'm betting against Nick Chubb. And Jerome Ford in the 12th feels like a – I feel like – a free running back. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, he just posted a chart on the injury dip. Do you guys yes. have that accessible? Yeah. Um yeah, it was it was it was it was like 71%. Yeah, basically um we uh, we had him we've done this for years now. Um we've we've asked him to compile the guys who are lower in ADP uh because of being injured or recovering from an injury and then we look after the season what that expected ADP was versus how they finished um buying the injury ADP last year in 2023 resulted in 71.4 percent of the time failing to meet that adp and keep in mind that adp is the bargain it's already ADP. a depressed it's ADP. already a depressed adp yeah. so i mean sure sometimes it, it's not 100 percent, 71 percent. so you know 29 percent of the time uh they are meeting it but if you're just going to end up needing to uh, we talk about this all the time on the show we're we're making calculated bets that we are just trying to get better and better odds of being right this is like a clear clear cut bet that you make if you can be up at 71 percent of the yeah. time being correct on a take then don't draft guys you know the the they're coming off the the training camp hamstring injury that's kept them out all summer but they're they're back. They'll they'll be fine for week one. Adrian Peterson is the one that ruins uh -huh. the situation is because you know, or or even like like Brees Hall's one of those players that technically outperformed their ADP due to injury dip. But it wasn't a fun ride. Like the ride it took a while to really uh, get what you wanted. So, you know, don't let the outlier be the rule and let leave you disappointed because it's gonna take high draft capital yeah, selection sometimes. There will be outliers, but it's finding edge. And a 70 percentile edge in fantasy football is 
That's massive. And to speak to Jerome Ford, uh, you know, obviously they they brought in Deonta Foreman, and so there could be some and debate. Naeem as, Hines is there too, as to whether you know Foreman will will take that big bodied chub role. But Ford was pretty darn good, and I I don't think he's by any means some sensational running back, but he is very serviceable, very capable. He's two hundred and ten pounds, runs a four four six. He's not um he's not a bum that can't handle it. Obviously, we saw him thrust into that role and we have to keep in mind Kareem Hunt Kareem Hunt was a part of this last year and he's gone yeah 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 so it, it's almost hard to remember that feels like it was you know forever ago but last year Kareem Hunt got a ton of work and he's not on the roster all right let's talk about some news news and notes from around the league it was very uh enjoyable to me to watch Kyron Ro Kyron Williams returned to the field and run through drills. That's because you traded for him. Yep, that's how it works. Um, <laughs> last Thursday, he he came back to the field, so that was good because he had a minor issue that was, you know, I mentioned a trade offer to you, Jason, and you were afraid by his his injury. That it, it worried me for a little bit because the you know he had dealt with a foot injury before, and you know that Kyron's only knock. Has been injuries. Awesome when he's on the field, but he has a smaller back and has an extreme workload. I'm still very, very much in on Kyron Williams. Uh, Big offensive line upgrades there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane Steichen said Anthony Richardson is dealing with some soreness. This made headlines. He was throwing with his left hand, not his right. Um, he said, quote, rest assured if we had a game on Sunday, he'd be out there. Throwing with his left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also, mean, he's, he's ramping up, but you be, just don't want to hear about it at all. Right, you don't want to you don't want to hear about it. The timeline was that he's supposed to be okay by training camp. We're not there yet. So the OG timeline is like he's still in recovery and we have seen him throwing powerfully with his right, but obviously he's getting sore right now because he hasn't been doing it through yeah. the entirety of the recovery. So this is somewhat to be expected. I will say this. I I don't know if you guys watched the video of of him in the camp because it was he throws at the end of this big long drill where he's you know, doing all this footwork exercise looks great at it. But I'm telling you right now, if he has to play lefty, it's not going to work. That throw oh. was terrible. It was like it was a full 10 yards over the guy's head. Still powerful arm. Breaking news, can't throw with opposite can't hand. Can't throw with the, okay. And so I just want us to be aware. No, Maybe that's, that's why smart. he's practicing. We don't have Oh, them. just in smart. case. Yeah. We don't have left-hand rankings for all the right-handed quarterbacks on the UDK. Off, the offhand? Yeah, the offhand. <laughs> um. Darren Waller, guys. Oh, we have another announcement. <laughs> you goo goodbye. This is Darren Waller has finally, officially retired from the NFL. This will be the last time we announce his retirement. I hope. Can you retire a retirement statement? Because that's what I'm going to do today. He is gone. One year in New York. Yeah. Draft in 2015. It is a sad day for the it, show. It's a bummer. Uh, Darren Waller was. The year it happened, it was so much fun. It was a big hit for the show. The Walrus is a nickname that will hang from the rafters. And sad to see him go, but his his body is done. His body's not playing football yeah. anymore. It it is funny to think like he he had a nine year career, and he only had two two seasons yeah. that were actually decent. Yeah, yeah, a lot of potential, and um, was in the upper echelon for a little while there. Uh, what else do we have? We have uh, really important announcements. Uh, Mediocre signing of the week. The drop might be longer than the tenure with the team, but Sterling Shepard, Shepard, one-year deal with the Bucks, and the Chiefs have re-signed McCall Hardman. The Bucks are doing weird things. Uh. Because we had the the announcement, you know, that we're going to move Chris Godwin back into the slot where that was, when Chris Godwin was great for fantasy football and looked like he was actually the number one wide receiver on the Bucks, mm -hmm. he was playing in the slot. Yeah. And then, like, they're making all these moves where I'm like, don't. Well, they draft like Jalen Jale McMillan. Jalen McMillan's a slot player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sterling Shepard. Yeah, I would think that he should be in the slot. He at this can play point. outside, but he's great in the slot. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think Sterling Shepard's just a 
a really great NFL wide receiver, or has been for yeah, before uh, his he's body 31 broke. years old. So See, a I, long I time ago he was. Yes, yes, yes. But they just they're doing some weird stuff. Yeah, I mean, what do you trust? I don't trust that Chris Godwin's going to rejuvenate his entire career. I, I I trust the fact that they're making moves that are contingency plans. Could yeah. be trust uh, actions, not words. And McCall Hardman back, and I you know that matters in as much as he's going to be one of the active game day wide receivers for this team. So, you know, they have a whole bunch of players at wide receiver. And when Hardman's there, that means the Justin Ross truthers are going to be let down or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, it's going to be like Hardman's just hitching a ride, man. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's going to be their kick returner or something. I am so excited. Yes. For the return. I am the new rules. so excited to see the new kick return stuff. I forget it. it, it you're it's like, happening this it's, year. It's completely different now. The kickoff has been modified. Lis listening to coaches talk about how they – how well, let me re-clarify. Listening to really smart, good coaches talk about how much they're working on the kick return and all the data that they're getting on how they, they think that you know successful kick returners will have, what, like over 100 carry uh, – 100 touches? 100 touches in that aspect of the game and that they will – I mean, this is going to be a big part, and it's funny because every year, every single season, you wait all year, fantasy football season kicks off in August, September comes around, you got preseason, and then you all gather for the kickoff, the first play of the season. And to it's, watch it going to the... To just not... Yeah. Now it's like, okay, we'll be back after commercial. <laughs> it's like, I'm now we get to see something. Mike McDaniel came out and said that he would not be surprised if within three or four weeks, all the wide receiver ones and the skill position players were begging to have opportunities to return kicks because it's the league has set up the new rules in a way where the stat, the statistics show that injuries are not going to be a, a disproportional aspect of the play. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have, it's more beneficial for the kick to land and be, you know, be received and run back. And so, cause they're moving it out to what now, isn't it like if it's a touchback? Yeah. Yeah, it goes back further. I don't know if I have the exact number here, Kyle. It goes basically back to the – I think it's the 25 or the 35. I thought it was something I don't crazy have it like right in front 35. of me. We'll look that up. Yeah. It's I, been I a while since it was announced. But I'm just excited for the opportunity for skill position players and other players to, you know, produce plays that matter for fantasy. And, yeah, I you know, most leagues don't count return yards, and it's going to be touchdown specific – but if my guy gets 100 chances to score a touchdown, I'll be excited. Yeah, it goes to the 30-yard 30 30, line. Okay, 30. So th that just means, you you know, if you're a special teams or head coach, uh, you know, one of those coordinators, you're saying, we got 30 yards to get a guy to tackle him to where it's a net positive for us. So you're going to be kicking it to the player over and over. And if you've got a Devon Achan back there returning kicks, that's, that, that's going to result in a couple touchdowns. So look at your league scoring settings. Um, because some, I think every league should reward special teams touchdowns to the player, but I, I, I think it's still in the minority that do that, but it, there's a healthy amount that do. Even rookies with opportunities on, on kickoffs, like Trey Benson in Arizona, does he get a chance to do that like David Johnson did? It'll be fun to see, fun to watch. All right, quick break, back with uh, some mailbag. All right, let's jump into it. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right, if you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Do we got a voicemail today, Al? We do. All right, let's do it. Ballers, this is Bradley from up in Canada. Super curious to uh, know your guys' favorite stack going into the 2024 season. Appreciate it, fellas. Bonjour. Uh, yeah, yeah. Favorite stack. I, I, I. Is will... this including ADP? I mean, or is this? Yeah, just yeah, yeah. No, this is including ADP. Like, if you're looking at the 2024 season, what have you been targeting? I could say that the one I have the most right now is that I think we we I think Andy, did you do this on the mock? It was that three four turn of grabbing Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith together. It's easy to do and you're not grabbing two onesie positions, so I, I like that. I will throw out that I think it's the best year ever 
even though you don't know where to target it, there's going to be success with Mahomes. Mahomes is cheaper than ever falling to the fourth round. You don't usually get that in the last couple of years. He's been a second round pick. And then his wide receiver all options, because they are a little bit more nebulous and you're not sure if it's going to be Hollywood Brown or if you want to wait on Rushy Rice or whatever, but all of their values, they don't cost a lot. So it's a it's an actual easy stack to pull off that could be very valuable down the road. And even though I don't like to do the two early onesie positions, like the cost right now on the Kelsey Mahomes right. and just like own that and hope that the Chiefs have, you know, a bounce back to what they have just just near, just near what they've been averaging the previous five years in touchdowns per game, that could be very valuable for fantasy. I could see Jaden Reed, Jordan Love happening. Sure. For later round stacks where, you know, you get a more upside. My my favorite stack considering you get a little bit of a later quarterback. It it's Jamar and Joe Burrow. Like Joe Burrow is going right now as QB seven over on sleeper. Uh, so I like if for high end wide receiver budget quarterback, the Kyler Marvin Harrison Jr. stack is very interesting as well. And then I if I leave, uh, I've talked about Jared Goff as kind of my my safety net at quarterback. If I can leave the draft with Amon Ra and Jared Goff. Like I, I'm happy. I'm at least the first two weeks. Maybe Jared Goff isn't my entire answer at the quarterback position, but I have the confidence to at least those two games. That's fine. I'll start with Goff. Amon Ra is the seventh pick off the board. So is that something where if you ended up in that position where you could draft Amon Ra, you were actively changing your quarterback strategy? I don't know that I would actively change it, but it to was, seek out the stack, I'm going to make sure that whatever I'm if I'm using the UDK. Or if I'm using an old man printed sheet like Andy, like I'm making sure that I have a note that I'm not going to forget that, like before you select your quarterback, make sure you like this ADP. You got Amon Ra. You can get Goff later if you want him. Yeah, and and that's one of those things where it doesn't change your strategy. Like now I'm I'm absolutely targeting yeah. Goff, but it is oh should you go through the draft and now you're in late quarterback mode, then yeah, if you're like oh like I'm looking at ADP and it's like oh Justin Herbert and Jared Goff are going near each other. Well, complete that stack. It does work in redraft leagues as well. It's not just a best ball tournament. I mean, if you're playing best right. ball, you pretty much have to stack. But uh, we, we had one of the DeSorbo brothers do a study on this for redraft leagues, and it proved to be valuable in redraft to have that stack. So, you know, put them together. All right. By the way, I, I do my cheat sheets on typewriter, actually, Mike. Mm. It's typewriter. Okay. Uh, Grant says, is Drake London off your board if you drafted Bijan? If not, is adding Kirk Cousins late in the draft too many players from one team? Someone likes their Falcons. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, man. If I if I start my team with Bijan, it's so that's so difficult to have such overexposure to pure hope. Where like the the Falcons have not, we don't have a track record here of like this is the the Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay Packers, where you're like, yeah, I'll just I'm a load up. Like Prime Prime Rogers, everyone on that team was great. Or like the Peyton Manning years when he was on the Denver Broncos. It you could you could be just overexposed to that team because you know it's going to be great. Drake's a second we, round pick. You can't do this. Yeah, you can, you yeah, can't I'd, do this. And there's no he's really in the second two oh six. There's man. no reason no, to do this. I can't. Do um, it. it's not to say that there isn't a world that exists where both those players yeah. end up beating their ADP at the same time, and it, and it works out. Again, we're just trying to bet on probability, and probability says that that both those guys don't outstandingly outproduce their ADP. And in a way, you know, we talk about the stack because you get double touchdowns at the same time. So it's a weak winning performance that you get. When you've got a running back and a wide receiver from the same team, they're going to kind of inverse correlate because, you know, every Bijan touchdown is a touchdown that won't be scored by Drake London. But the problem with Drake London is right now, let's take Bijan out of the equation. I'm okay drafting Drake London, but he is darn near being drafted at his ceiling already. You know, he's sandwiched right now between Marvin Harrison Jr. and Devontae Adams. If you go wider, you're talking about uh, Chris Olave, and you've got all whatever Texan wide receiver you want. Like, there's there's no reason to put all your chips in the Falcons' basket. You know, all of a sudden, Kirk Cousins has a problem with the Achilles, doesn't come back, and now your first and second round pick are just toast. No. Yeah, it, if you told me it was a flyer 
on a guy in the eighth round that happens to be on the same team, I don't care at that point. These are two have to depend on them selections. Yeah. So when the question is like, is he off your board? Well, no, he's not off my board if he falls to the fourth, but he won't fall to the third. So yeah, he's off my board. Yeah. He might be off my board regardless of the Bijan question where he's going. Like Drake London this year just seems risk. I, I can't see myself drafting him right I now. I can see myself drafting him, but I, I will fully admit that the risk reward balance scale is far more on the risk side when the when you factor in where he's going and and what you could take instead of I him. I can't imagine you on the board with Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh no, there. no way. There's a couple there's there's still a couple um at ADP I have other wide receivers ahead of him. Right. Right. Yeah. YouTube question from JJ he says will Pat Fryermuth have a career year due to Arthur Smith? Um, really get loose. Probably not. <laughs> I think absolutely yes, Mike. The well, the the question is because last year, thirty four percent of Atlanta's targets went to the tight end position. Now that was that was number one in the NFL. It was mostly split up between Jonu Smith and Kyle Pitts, to the point of not really pleased with either of those guys. Uh, if you were starting them on a continual basis. And is that what Arthur is going to do again? Like, will he find another player on the team that you end up losing? Like, it, like if if Friar Muth could somehow see a twenty plus percent target share, then yeah, he'd have a career year and he'd be great for fantasy football. I think he's a a good tight end who he has enough skills in the as a receiver that if he gets featured, he can come through. But I just I don't know that he's going to get that featured role yeah I mean when I say absolutely yes I think he has his best season of his career that's not to say that he's still good for fantasy that's so his number eight finish was 63 for 732 and two exactly that's a pretty that's solid that's, year that's solid but that's two touchdowns that's not that great for a for a fantasy finish I mean I know he finishes I'm not the sure tight end I want eight. you to say absolutely yes about me at some point in time. <laughs> you just said absolutely yes and then now you're taking it all back. I'm I'm saying that he has his career year this season. I think that's absolutely true, but he can have a career year. He can get to 750 and 4. That's his career year and still not really be a difference maker for fantasy is what I'm saying. But with I mean you you've got Deontay, Deontay Johnson is gone. And so the amount of targets vacated, you've got a quarterback change and an offensive coordinator change that seems like it should be improvements for Friar Muth, and he was dealing with injury last year. So I, I, if I have to, you know, push my chips somewhere, I, I believe he has a bounce back season. I think they need him to like this offense really needs him to be a quality weapon in the yeah. past. I think I think the big question is just, you know, going into year four, who is Pat Friar Muth really? Sure. You know, is he is he capable of going Ingram and Najoku later in his career? I think or so. Or is he is he more middle of the road where we just accept like you're not going to build your offense around him. He might score some touchdowns. He might be Kyle Rudolph. That's a tough thing to predict with Arthur Smith in Pittsburgh. The projected He's also been hurt every year. The projected wide receiver starters for the Steelers right now are George Pickens, Van Jefferson, and Roman Wilson. Yeah, well, yeah, they yeah. they need him, and I and I do think that who's he's, their who's their other tight ends because that's who I would bank on. Um, well, you have Darnell Dar Washington. Darnell Washington Perfect. is the career monstrous year. beast career year. Um, but I you know I don't see him having. Um, I don't think he's a superstar where you build your offense around him. But sticking with the Steelers, like a Heath Miller type who was very good for a long time. Um, I I think that that is in the easy range of outcomes for Friar Muth. All right, a question from Nathan. He says, do we uh, do running quarterbacks really take away from overall running back production? The obvious They obviously take away volume, but I would expect running back efficiency to be boosted. So the, we do have data on this. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the running back efficiency sometimes is boosted, but in the end, uh, there, we've, got a, we've got a whole um, article on this. But since 2015, only one running back has scored 15 fantasy points per game alongside a quarterback who scored 100 plus plus total rushing fantasy points. So it is it is the rare. ceiling gets lower exactly because the rushing touchdowns from those quarterbacks is one thing, but then also you've got 
scrambles that don't turn into dump offs. Yep. That's I think that's the more continuous throughout the game because you know you might finish a game where the the quarterback didn't have a rushing touchdown he didn't vulture a rushing touchdown but what he did do is on all these plays where a Kirk Cousins would you know just check the ball down to the running back because the the pass rush is getting there Lamar takes off or whoever takes off Anthony Richardson should take off running it's probably their best play yeah Lamar's teams they are bottom five in running back target percentage and then over the last two years Jalen Hurts the, the Eagles have been 28th in targets to the running back position it's just that's a um it's one of the reasons i did move saquon in our league of record was fear of that oh, situation okay. i i guess i'm just asking jonathan taylor with how, how you guys yeah. feel about anthony richardson and then you know saquon barkley with jalen hurts like do you factor this question into the considerations there i do of i mean it Again, this is really ceiling where Jonathan Taylor to me, I, well, at least what I watched last year was that's a guy who could still be the RB1 in the framework around him. It will be really difficult for him to get there because uh, because of receptions. You just you have to have receptions. Uh, but but for me, like Saquon, the fact that the, you have so many. Jalen Hurts, one-yard touchdowns, uh, at least we did last year. Uh, and not even just the one yard of sometimes they'll get to the two and they say hey, we're going to do this two times in a row and see if it works. You have that combined with low target share plus Saquon's age. Like it's, Barkley's an interesting fantasy player for me, for me this year where I, I can see every single path and talk myself into it, but at the end I'm just – I don't like his ADP, and I don't think he's going to be on a lot of my teams. I will say this. The one running back who had 15 fantasy points per game with the Russian quarterback, Saquon Barkley right. yeah. with Daniel Jones. Also, so that the Foot Clan has good context here when we say that, we really are just talking about upside, not whether yeah. they're good for fantasy. Last year for context and half PPR, there were only five running backs who scored 15 fantasy points or more on a per-game basis, one of which was Alvin Kamara, who obviously – you got to go per game because he missed a big chunk of the season. So, I mean, you're talking about the best of the best who get to that point in half PPR. So, like, can uh, Jonathan Taylor be the number one running back? Probably not. Can he still be out outstanding for fantasy football and, you know, the running back five or six? Yeah, I think he can. It, I, for, for the fun of it, I wanted to look back at last year's stats and see the rushing leaders at the quarterback position. Okay. Number one. This is where I'm going to fill in the blank. Oh. Okay, what are what are we doing? Yardage? yards, yardage. Yeah, because uh, I was just saying you could think in your you could think real quick about what the running backs did. Rushing yardage for quarterbacks, so yeah. like Lamar. Lamar was one. Okay, Fields was two. Oh, Fields was two. Yeah, Hertz was three, and we're at six hundred five yards. Josh Allen was four. Yeah, <laughs> Joshua Dobbs <laughs> was Dude, fifth. Yeah, that's why you could stream him sometimes. Taysom Hill counted in our stats as sixth. Then it was Mahomes and Russell Wilson. Okay. Russell Wilson still at eight that last was... year with 341 yards. You did not have – I mean, that that's like less than a third of the quarterbacks at 300 or above. Yeah, I mean, obviously no now Richardson. we add in Anthony Richardson and Jaden no Daniels. No Kyler for Kyler. the season. Yeah. So I think it, it should have more of an impact this season. Unless three of them just get knocked out hurt every year. Sure. sure. I mean – one of those wasn't hurt last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, quick break. Back with some more questions. Instagram question from Evan Randall. Says, uh, Josh Jacobs or Stephon Diggs? Mm. <laughs> right now they're going back to back in ADP on Sleeper. Right now. Top of the third. They are both being drafted much higher than we think of them <laughs> i would much rather like if i had to take the gamble i'm taking the gamble with josh jacobs i i feel like and jason you've said this like i can see i can see the path for jacobs to have a great year yeah i think it's, and I, I i guess i could see that path a little bit for Diggs too but it's, it's much riskier because of like one team tried to get rid of stefan Diggs, and he's on the older side of the prime the other team Went out and pursued Josh Jacobs to give him opportunities. Yeah, I saw one player be terrible the whole season, and I saw one player be terrible for like half a season. 
So does that mean that you I, – Between these two, I, I mean, would take the chance on Stephon Diggs. It's crazy. For a terrible season for Josh Jacobs, he had a heck of a middle. I Fifth, I, sixth. If I tenth, if I had second, the, this is these are both players that I'm Fair. generally passing on in my draft. Yeah. I like other guys around where they're going, and I I see the pathway for them to be unsuccessful at their draft position right now. But if I had to pick one of these guys, it would be Josh Jacobs. I know I've poo pooed a lot on um you know is that the, an absolutely yes, Josh <clears throat> Jacobs, or just a regular yes? That's just a regular okay. yes on Josh Jacobs. There there is a clear and obvious path towards fantasy success. He's replacing someone who almost every year was a, a top 12 running back. He's going to a great offense. Uh, two years ago, he led the league in, in running, and he's getting paid a lot of money. So, they're, you know, the, the, the options for Josh Jacobs to have a great season are certainly there. Um, Etienne I'm, is two spots behind him. Henry oh, is five spots behind him. Yeah, I'd rather have both of them. Pacheco's guys. around behind him. Yeah, th this is why. Chad White's around behind him. This is why I'm not drafting either of those guys, but the, the pathway is there. Stephon Diggs is tough because uh, even if Stephon Diggs has a good season, and this is kind of my hardest, this is why I'm drafting Tank Dell if I grab one of the three, because I could see all three having good seasons. But the problem is if all three have good seasons, they're coming in inconsistent formatting. You know what I mean? Like It's not like all three are going to have good weeks Every week, it's going to be this is a Nico week, this is a Diggs week, this is a Dell week, and you taking Mike Evans over Stephon Diggs? Yeah, I I think I, yes, I would take Mike Evans over Stephon Diggs. You too, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> a Dell week? Sorry, I know that's all I heard. Too. I heard it. Hello. And I, yeah, I couldn't. Hello. I couldn't find the joke though. Is it me <laughs> you're looking for? That's Lionel Richie. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why did you sing that, Jay? <laughs> because Adele has a hello. Oh, oh that's right. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Lionel Richie week. Oh, man. Guys, Can I've, we been, get I've been sick all weekend. Can we get Adele to cover that song? Because <laughs> she's just awesome. sang Lionel Richie. That song's great, though. I know it is, but it has nothing to do with Adele. <laughs> <laughs> they both say hello. Oh, it's the hello from the other <laughs> side. Yep. That's the one. Oh, dang. Are we going to do a mashup? Is that you got you getting that going, Al? AI hey, oh. can handle that. All right, we're moving on. Uh, Tilio Crown says, what do you three gentlemen look at when making tiers for players? Jason, you're the man to answer this. Yeah, so we, we look at a lot of different factors. We're trying to group players together with the, the most likely range of outcomes. It's not just so when we stat people out for the UDK, We've got their kind of median expected projection in there. We give a risk rating. We give a, uh, you know, an upside meter with them. But when we group them for tiers, there might be two players who are actually pretty close. You might look and you're like, well, these guys are only projected to be two points apart, and there's a tier break between them. That's because we're making intentional efforts to group the players together where we feel like when you draft one of those guys in the tier – at the front versus the back, you've got a similar enough range of outcomes between them. It, it helps you it helps you take the right position every round because you can look and say, I'm maximizing my value. There's so many people left that have the same range of outcome. There's only one guy left at this position with that range of outcome. I'll take that one. All right. Instagram question from Bewieland says, am I crazy for being all in, all capitals, on Troy Franklin. Hey, Franklin. <laughs> I forgot we had that. Um, <laughs> all crazy, in, mate. You're, if you're all in, that's crazy. What does it even mean to be all in on? Drafting him on every single one of your squads. But he costs nothing. Yeah, but that's you. you <laughs> there's other guys who cost nothing. So th this is wild, okay? 4%. Of the 165 wide receivers drafted on day three over the last decade, have hit 10 plus fantasy points in year one. The four percent, four percent. Do you remember earlier this episode when we said a 71 percent bet is a great bet to take? Yeah, uh -huh. this would be a 96 percent <laughs> bet against Troy Franklin being good this season. However, let's just make it a little worse because. <laughs> He's got a rookie quarterback, mm -hmm. and so the combination of how a rookie quarterback helps sustain a wide receiver one for redraft purposes. I mean, look, 
I love Troy Franklin. I'm the Troy Franklin stand here. I, I don't. I, I don't remember how. No, I, you, I liked him not as much. as Okay, so I. You I were the. I loved captain. Troy Franklin. Absolutely, Captain. I'll. I'll stamp that. I'll tattoo that. I was pre NFL draft. Absolutely yes. I was an absolutely yes on Troy Franklin. I still love um, his traits. I hope that he works out. I'm 100 percent betting against you Troy like, Franklin working out this year. Gotcha. What? He's gonna be in the gym. That, that's what I th That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Because we're dumb. We hear dumb I things. I like it. Switch. It's one Hello of from the other <laughs> side. Happy off season, everybody. Uh, Just imagine what our live I don't 10th even, anniversary yeah. show will be. I don't like Troy Franklin. I didn't right. like him. Pre NFL Pre -NFL draft. Pre NFL draft. However, I I think that stats kind of misleading. Because how so? Because day three spans uh, the fourth round through the end of the draft. Yeah, like, and, and it, th th so many of those, when you're talking about sixth and seventh round picks, yeah, they're all like, special teamers. Like, we should be looking at least at the fourth round, and then we should look at... The hit rate is, like, the guys who do it are actually... We could actually, get up to 10% here. The, the guys who actually have overcome, they're mostly fifth rounders. Oh, Puka. Puka, Tyreek, So Slayton. that's Amon Ross St. Brown. <laughs> I said mostly. Mm, okay. Stephon Diggs was okay. a fifth rounder. Yeah, no, yeah, like I said, not misleading at all. <laughs> Terrible it's, odds. And uh, I did see um, Sean Payton talking about Mims again. Oh, no. Oh, he talks about him all the time. No. He does talk about Mims a lot. He talked about him all last year. Oh, he's, he's, I'm going to get him more involved. You liar! Yeah, but it was as soon as Jerry Judy's gone, I can get Mims on the field. Some coaches are going to be so happy that they can just ostracize some of these players on that kick return play I was talking about. Mm. And then you think about the conversation you have with them. Hey, coach, why why am I not getting any wide receiver snaps? You are just too important. <laughs> you are so important. Except it might be true now. I know. But like Mims, I bet you Mims is returning kicks. Oh, he and he'll be exceptional. And Franklin at will it. be dying to do it. Yeah, Franklin, get oh. on the get on the field, buddy. Show what you but, got. Show them. Honestly, after him burners. working out in the way that we said would be good for him. That's true. He's, a He's 176 pounds. Although I think he was like 180 something at his pro day. Wow, this question comes from Instagram Nick C Mitchell. Can you explain why you believe in Brian Thomas so much? It's directly towards Andy. Yeah. Let Andy, me, you have the floor. Let me see his ADP right now. Uh 904. So okay. so I'm very unlike when we had the discussion about Malik Neighbors, a player that we all love and we believe in. Malik Neighbors is being drafted very very high. Was well, like the ninth wide receiver uh, nineteen. Oh, you mean like top five in the NFL draft? No, I, he's being drafted Six. third round. Okay, Malik Neighbors is a third round pick. You don't get a discount on taking the chance on the rookie. Brian Thomas being in the ninth round is one of the reasons that I love him. He's got huge opportunity in front of him. He is the he is the best athlete on that team at wide receiver already. Like that's just it's done. Like they don't have Calvin Ridley anymore. Christian Kirk is a great player. He's a great wide receiver. He's a tactician. He's a route runner. He's not a better athlete than Brian Thomas. Gabe Davis, not a better athlete than Brian Thomas. So I, I believe that the cream rises to the top and that he's going to have opportunity from the jump, and he'll take advantage of that opportunity. So to me, that is a good bet. Now, if you told me Brian Thomas was being priced you know, at the ceiling, we're not having many conversations about Brian Thomas anymore. So, you know, that that's my number one reason I love him is that right now he sits there as a late eighth, early ninth flyer pick. He's probably one of the guys, like in our quick question, that'll rise up the draft boards and ruin this entire discussion. But as of today, that's one of the reasons. And I loved what I saw on film from him. He was one of my favorite players. He was ranked very high in my rookie ranking. So if you go to straight opportunity, I'm going to fall in love a little bit. Yeah, and there's... Like the cut up of Trevor Lawrence just missing on so many opportunities for huge plays, which Kyle just dug this up. Lawrence was second in the NFL in 20 plus air yard touchdowns last year, uh, behind Brock Purdy. But there was there was so much meat left on the bone, and maybe Brian Thomas clicks with Trevor Lawrence, and those start to connect more often. This is. Like the the bet to me on Brian Thomas ninth round for he was a first round right he's not yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah it, it, yes that's that's when we talk about targeting rookie wide receivers in your your fantasy draft that's what we're talking about it's guys who were in the first round 
who are being drafted as afterthoughts, as sleepers. Like those are the players that you really should you should load up on those guys. And like I didn't like Brian Thomas nearly as much as Andy, but I know my strategy of going after rookies in a certain position. So that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. And but anyway, my point being it's more a bet on can Trevor Lawrence take the step that we've been waiting for him to take. Yeah, and it, and it's really touchdowns. Touchdowns to yeah. me are the uh, – that's what hasn't clicked for Trevor Lawrence, and that's going to be what makes Brian Thomas actually a star. Do you – how do you feel about Jermaine Burton? I Redraft I, possibilities for Jermaine Burton in, in Cincinnati. Because uh, you loved him in, in – Yes. You know, on film. Yes. Alabama. Yep. Yeah, uh, there was, yeah, there was so much about his profile to love. No, Tyler Dro Boyd. Drops into the third round. Presumably because of off the field stuff, which that's look that's a red flag. <laughs> like if you're if you if some scouts are saying you're a first round talent and you drop into the third because you have already gotten into it with two different coaching staffs, that's a problem. But you can overcome those. Like people evolve, they mature. But in terms of redraft, I put the odds lower because I. I think that T plays out the year. Yeah, and, and he's a deep – like, uh, best ball? If you want to take some shots in a best ball league um, on Jermaine Burton, I love that late in your draft because he's someone that could catch a few over the top, top behind the defense balls from Burrow. You know, he averaged over 20 yards a catch yeah. his last season um, at Alabama. But I redraft, it does feel difficult behind – you know, without an injury to T. Higgins – or obviously Chase. Isaac in California says, Hey, ballers, my girlfriend beat me in fantasy in her first year in our league, did knock me out of the playoffs, uh. and put her into the playoffs. She brings it up anytime we talk about football. Is there any coming back from this? I have been playing for 10 years, and this was her first time ever. Uh, I don't, I would say I don't think you have to, man. That, that sounds great. Like the, the losing part, not great. But the fact that you have, you have somebody that you're with who, it seems to be like entering a very passionate phase of being a fantasy football player, and you guys, you can share that together. She brings it up every time we talk about football. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, but also you can't come back. You can't come back. <laughs> I mean, I agree with Mike. Like this is really cool, but now you yeah, are look, you're just a loser. What is death? You never got, die. You've now got a wonderful partner. You loser. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, kind of how I yeah, feel. Yeah. Forever. Someone still You'll be a wants loser to forever. be with you. <laughs> right, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Why would she stay? <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay, a good point. That, no, it's a good point. That's she, the actual argument here. She turns you. She could do better. She turns you into a loser, and she still sees redeeming qualities about. Oh you. man, good for, for you. Now, what, what an angel! Yeah, I, <laughs> she goes not, back to back. Not, She's not, out of there. Not gonna last. <laughs> no, good luck, man. Yeah. Finding somebody new. Um, all right, that is gonna do it for today's episode of the show. Come and see us live in Los Angeles, August 24th at the Palace Theater, ballerslive.com. Head there right now and grab your tickets. We are excited. It's going to be fun. Celebrate our 10th anniversary. My goodness. We got to get that shark. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.